Fernando Vargas live right here on this program. In our own main event, Thomas Tate, he's had three shots at a world title. Hasn't gotten a world title yet. One of those shots was against Roy Jones. So two shots. Really. Yeah, he's not going to win that one. What does this guy have left? What can he do here tonight? Well, he's in a division that's turning out to be very interesting because Felix Trinidad, William Joppy, and Bernard Hopkins, once they're done sorting out the middleweight picture, they're su the winner is supposed to move up and meet Roy Jones at 168 pounds. Jones will move down. So super middleweight's about to be a money division, and Thomas Tate is a name. He's been around for a while. He's been winning for a while. Tonight is not so much if Thomas Tate wins. We're here to find out how he wins. He must look impre impressive if he wants to go after that money in a money division. Sounds like you got Hopkins, Trinidad moving up and Jones moving down. Squash. Yeah, gonna, gonna 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 squash. And, and James Butler's <laughs> fighting Sven Aki coming up. A lot of stuff going on at Super Middleweight. Well, the latest on Rockman and Tyson. Also, Pito Cardona will be on this card as well. Right now, let's go ringside live boxing with Bob Papa and Teddy Atlas. <laughs> Thanks, Brian and Max. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. We're at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. We started off with a six-round lightweight bout. Gary Boletto and Freddy Cruz. Freddy Cruz, 39 years of age. He turned pro when Gary Boletto was nine years of age. 52 wins, 28 losses, 9 draws, 17 knockouts. He has lost four in a row. He'll be taking on Gary Boletto. He's a local New England prospect looking to be moved along by his promotional group. Has a 19-0 record with 18 knockouts against very limited competition. And we've seen Gary Boletto before here on Friday Night Fights. In his 21 pro bout career, he has 55 rounds of professional boxing action. We have the 18 knockouts, eight first round knockouts in his career. He's going against a veteran guy tonight. Someone who has been in against everybody. But it'll be tough to tell if it's a true test for Boletto because Cruz is 39 years of age. The rules as governed by the Mohegan tribe, the tribal rules for the Mohegan Sun Casino. Three knockdown rule in effect. Standing eight count in effect. Referee or doctor may stop the bout. Fighter cannot be saved with a bend in any round. Accidental fouls will go to the scorecards after half the rounds are complete. 25-year-old Gary Boletto works as a contractor. He and his wife Christina own Boletto's Cafe in Cranston, Rhode Island. As you alluded to, Boletto has been in with a lot of soft opponents. Even though Mr. Cruz is 39 years old, this is a step up in class. Cruz has fought five former world champions or current world champions. Cruz has been knocked out three times in his career, including his last fight, Teddy, against a former champion, Julian Lorsi, in France. On March the 12th, he was knocked out in the second round. It's always tough to come back off a knockout loss with no buffers in between. And less than two full months ago. Boletto is strong, but he can be wide and a little raw. Cruz would like to make sure he can be in a situation where maybe he can punch inside some of those wide punches of Boletto. Or be all the way at the end of the punches where he makes Boletto reach in, Bob. Tip over a little bit. Where he can get an opening that way. Right now, Cruz is moving a little bit. Not allowing Boletto, maybe the stronger man, obviously the younger man, to get set to punch. Cruz who turned pro back in January of 1986. Has 626 rounds in his 89 professional fights. Fought the likes of Prince Nassim Ahmed, knocked out in the sixth round by him in 1994. Lost a 12-round decision to Alfredo Vasquez for the WBA 120-pound title, 122-pound title back in 1992. Then against Nestor Garza, Derek Gaynor, Victoriano Sosa twice. Cruz has the big advantage in experience, Boletto, youth, and strength. Cruz is a smaller man, turned pro as a super bantamweight, fought most of his career as a featherweight. Boletto, bigger man, he's been a lightweight his whole career. Matter of fact, his last two fights, he was at junior welterweight. Boletto trying to 
to find the range with that jab. Cruz, the experience Cruz has thrown away the first round. Just move it. Trying to get a little bit of a sight, an idea about what Boleto is about. Look for a change in the next round. Cruz has not landed a punch according to CompuBox. Joe Carnicelli, Jack Obermeyer at the controls of CompuBox tonight. So far, Boleto has done what he's had to do. And there's a knockdown. Three, four, like more of a push than anything five, else. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Referee Charles Bucks. Dwyer gives the count. Nine. And there's the bell to end round number one. So make it a 10-8 round for Gary Belletta. Well, coming up at our main event tonight, we have a 12-round NABF super middleweight bout for you. Thomas Ice T. Tate will step into the ring, former world championship challenger, taking on a last-minute sub in Fernando Zuniga. Glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights. Bob Popo along with Teddy Atlas. Thomas Tate is a tough guy. He always looks to dress for success, Teddy. But he was planning to fight Scott Pemberton. Scott Pemberton, though, has some legal problems with the FBI and is not available to fight. He has all kinds of legal problems. So how does this affect the 35-year-old Tate preparing for Pemberton getting Zuniga? So you just said the, th the most important thing probably there. The 35-year-old Tate, very experienced. He doesn't get affected by things like that. He's too experienced for it. As far as Zuniga... Well, you know what? He could be affected a little bit. He hasn't had time to prepare for the style of tape. But Zuniga is a come-at-you kind of guy. His style is probably not going to change much anyway. What you see is what you get. All right, well, that's coming up in our main event tonight. We continue with round number two, Gary Boletto and Freddie Cruz. Also, Pito Cardona and Julian Wheeler in a very important lightweight fight for both of those boxers. Sort of a crossroads fight for each of them. Wild punches by Boletto. Come on, Gary. And you think Boletto felt that he had Cruz hurt at the end of that first round, Teddy? Even though Cruz sort of reacted as if it was more of a push on that knockdown? A young, ambitious fighter like Boletto, who always who depends on strength and aggression, will always get a charge out of that. Will always get a lift out of that and believe that he's got his man where he wants him. That's what his whole game is positioned around, whether it's true or not. This fight, as far as Cruz goes, is about how much he has left and how much he wants to fight. At this point in his career, after 89 fights, Bob. Well, you know, he ate a right hand over the top. Boleto very wild. Then he scored with an uppercut on the oh, inside. Good move by Boleto there. He took a little step back as Cruz was falling in, trying to grab. And that step back created room for the uppercut by Boleto. Good right oh, hook to the body from Boleto. Cruz just really Break holding. Punch. Break punch. Break He's not really throwing a lot of punches. But Boleto got a good look at Cruz last round. Good look at a lot of movement. So you would think in the corner, one of the things that would have been said to Boleto is go to that body. Take that ability of Cruz to move away from your power. Take it away from him. Kill those legs. A rare jab from Cruz. And this is where Boleto should be going to the body. Not only because he's missed a few punches, but also because of what we've already stated. The leg movement of Cruz. Body shots will take that leg movement away. Well, the veteran Cruz, you kind of get the sense that he has seen a few flaws in Boleto because now he's counter-punching a little bit, Teddy. Looking to pick his spots. That was the idea that first round. Thrown away that first round. Although we didn't expect it to be a 10-8 round. Can't throw too many around. Too many rounds away in the six-round fight. Good left hook to the body, and a right. Boleto mixing up his punches. Cruz gives him just enough movement to get out of danger. This whole fight's going to be up to whether or not Cruz wants to punch inside those punches. Those weren't bad punches by Boleto, but they were a little wide. It's up to Cruz if he wants to do something in between them. So far, Gary Boleto controlling this fight through two rounds. <laughs> End of round number one, Gary Boletto drops Freddy Cruz. 
Short little punch on the inside. It looked like it was a combination of the right hand, a little bit of the side of the head, behind the ear, off the top of the head. Might have thrown his equilibrium off a little bit, and a push. Sort of a little bit of a shove at the same time. Now, Teddy, there were no knockdowns in the second round, but you caught something near the end of the second round, didn't you? Yes, sir. Belletto, who is strong, does throw wide punches. Looked like he caught Cruz on the top of the head right at the end of the round of Cruz's legs. Buckle. He was hurt right at the belt. Break. 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 Take a look at the punch numbers in round two. Paletto has landed 13 punches in each of the first two rounds. Of those 26 connected, according to CompuBox, 22 have been power shots, which is not a big surprise with Paletto's style. That time, Paletto. Track Cruz into the corner with the jab. Close with the jab and ends with the right hand. Kept him in good position. So I think the one thing Boleto has to do, good left hook down low by Boleto. He's got to try to eliminate those. But he's doing that good work on the body into the head. He's got to eliminate that one just wild wide punch. Yes, he does. That the good fighters, the next level of fighters, will not let you get away with that one wide one. They'll make you pay a price when you're out of position with that one wide punch. They'll look to counter right back. Paletto has been six rounds four times. But he'd like to get Cruz out of there. As Lorsi did. Back on March the 12th in France. Every time Cruz gets touched around the head, his legs get a little funny. Like a 39-year-old fighter might get. Right now, Cruz is just trying to survive. Nobody needs me to tell him that. As soon as the stronger Boleto gets close, Cruz looks to tie up. Cruz is going to think about doing more than surviving the six rounds here. He's going to have to start punching inside. Some of those punches from Boleto. There are opportunities, like right there. But nothing from Cruz. Good miss by Cruz there, but nothing in return. Okay. No, no payment for the miss. Okay, Boleto's done a nice job, though. We'll give him credit as far as mixing shots to the head with body punches. But geography-wise, Boleto's done a good job right here. Getting Cruz against the ropes where he can't use his legs. <laughs> Who's trying to counter? A little uppercut on the inside from Boleto. A lot of a lot of slipping, a lot of defense by Cruz, a lot of survival. But not enough punching back in between. Gary Boleto having an easy time through three rounds. <laughs> Round number four underway, Gary Boleto in the white trunks. He's a New England prospect with a 19-0-2 record and 18 knockouts against limited New England fair going against 39-year-old Freddy Cruz from the Dominican Republic. Cruz was dropped near the end of the first round. Paletto has been able to tee off in this fight. He's landed 44 power shots through the first three rounds. And occasionally Cruz is looking to fire off a couple of counter left hands, but for the most part, just trying to avoid getting hurt. You see the numbers right there, according to CompuBox. And if you were counting the amount of punches that Cruz has actually thrown with a pencil and paper, you'd probably come close to the same amount. Not a lot of interest so far, quite honestly, but it can change quickly if Cruz decides, I think, to start punching break, break, break. at the right time. In between some of those widest shots sometimes of Boletos. Off some of those misses, like right there, from Boleto. Well, the trainer of Freddy Cruz, Luigi Campadora, he was uh, trying to get Cruz to throw some more punches. An Italian, I believe. Yes. He picked up on that then. Paisano. Well, the bulk of Cruz's career was fought in Italy. From 1986 to 1992, almost all of his fights were in Italy. See those two misses there by Belay? That is exactly what you were alluding to earlier. 
that Boleto has a habit of going to the head, loading up, missing and getting out of position. Right there, he got counted coming in by Cruz. Cruz needs to start taking advantage of some of those misses with Boleto. And Boleto, win or lose his fight, needs to correct some of those situations. So when he steps to the next level in boxing, he will pay a price. Because there will be somebody there waiting to make him pay a price for those misses. No doubt about that. So how you have to teach a fighter. Even though you do something wrong today and you get away with it, you have to think tomorrow or the next day you're going to pay a price. So even if you get away with it, hey, don't feel too secure about it. Correct it. Somebody has the right stuff. Again, missing punch by the letter. Nothing in return. Hey, Boleto sort of fits the mold of a lot of uh, oh, work. There you go. a lot of regional prospects in the New England area. Workhorse guy, not the most skilled guy in the world. Blue collar type guy gives you an honest effort. Hey. Freddy Cruz in the red with the blue and white accenting. Cruz was dropped near the end of the first round. Boleto, for the most part, has been able to just tee off on Cruz. Although, Teddy, in uh, round four, Cruz was able to land some decent counter shots. We take a look at the power punches through four rounds. Lopsided in Boleto's favor. But what Cruz has done here, Teddy, is, uh, at least I think, at certain points, as Boleto lands a right hand, kind of exposed some of the flaws in Boleto's game at this point. But Boleto doesn't look like he'll pay tonight. But he'll have to collect those for the future. And right now, he's trying to finish off Cruz. Be a good idea with the wildly experienced Cruz that Boleto would go to the body. Freeze that head movement. He's not having success in the head. You'll hit Cruz with the first one like he did. The right hand that broke Cruz back into the ropes. But then Cruz is going to go into that survival mode, that radar mode, moving his head. You have to go to the body. Freeze that head movement. Boleto's going to need to learn that. Well, other than the Gary Boleto fans here, there are two people who are rooting for Boleto to end this fight. And that's Pito Cardona and Julian Wheeler. They are scheduled to fight in our next bout. They came to the Mohegan Sun expecting to fight a 10 round in what's a very important fight for both of them. It was reduced to eight because Boleto is contracted by the promoter and he had to get a six round fight so if this fight ends early they'll get to fight 10. you know right now if i was in the corner boleto i would tell him anytime you have clues in the corner only two types of punches to throw body and uppercuts nothing else Cruz is leading forward a little bit. The body shot would lead him right into that uppercut. The Boleto would concentrate on those two types of punches. No need for any other punches. No need for those punches. Cruz has been knocked out three times in his career. That punch on top of the head hurt Cruz a little bit there. Now Boleto should concentrate on that body and those uppercuts. Hey, you can make a case for stopping it. I mean, Cruz isn't doesn't throw a punch for about a minute. I mean, this whole round has been fought right in that corner with Cruz throwing absolutely nothing. But a lot of the punches from Boleto missing. This is where you want to be selective and accurate and telling with your punches. Because with another tight fighter in front of him, Boleto will not only be missing punches, but he might be paying and getting caught in between. Hey! Number five, Gary Boleto landed more punches than Freddy Cruz has landed in the entire fight. Cruz has landed 20 punches in the whole fight. Boleto landed 21 in round number five a round that was fought the entire round was fought in the blue corner you take a look at the numbers that's why i made it a 10-8 round even though there was no knockdown for boleto i mean cruz was not even competitive in that round there's wide so punches again from boleto but he didn't pay a price one thing i will give boleto credit for even though he's still there so he's using his jab to close the gap 
with the retreating cruise. In the past, I've right, seen him right, not do that. Right. I've seen him reach in and lead in with wide hooks and right hands to close the gap. So he's gotten that out of the way. He's gotten that down. His trainer is Chuck Sullivan. You walk in, you want to walk in behind the cover of the jam. You want to take steps, you don't want to reach. Otherwise you leave yourself wide open for counters. Again, those wide head shots by Moreno needs to be educated on when he gets in to close range, especially with a big in the corner. Go to that body. Forget the head. Don't wait till you miss. Just as a good rule of thumb, good fundamentals, good ideas. Go to the body. This is the 632nd round of Freddy Cruz's career. He's 39. Obviously, Teddy continues to box for the, the pay. Says, as long as I feel good, I keep boxing. Coming off a knockout loss. Not competitive in this fight. Does a guy like this even bother sparring in between fights? Not that much. That's a very good question. Very honest question. Not that much. He doesn't need it. This is his 90th fight. He knows what it's about now. Man. He's calm, he's relaxed, he sees everything. Does a little sparring, probably with amateurs, with guys that get his reflexes ready, best that he can. I'm just thinking about the punishment. He's taking a lot of shots, but not a ton of clean shots. But a guy like this, this experience, this age, he will do a lot of work with sparring. The younger guys need more sparring coming up to get calm, to get relaxed to get vision in the ring where they can see things. They can think of the need to fire. All the guys have that already. They don't need nearly as much. You have an older car, you don't drive it on the highway so much. You just drive it around the block. Well, it's about to end the fight. Not a lot of suspense as far as this one is concerned, as far as how the judges will have it scored. Gary Boletto pounded Freddy Cruz for six rounds. We'll get the official tally of the judges' cards. When we return, you're watching Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. Gary Boletto, Freddie Cruz finished with their bout. We take a look at the total punches. Boletto landed 81 power shots, dropped Cruz in the first round. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 60 to 52, same as mine. For the official cards, here is M. Mark Biro. Judge John Duke Lawson scores it 59-54. And judges Steve Epstein and Donald Ackerman both see it, 60-52, all to the winner by unanimous decision, Gary Tiger Boletto. So Gary Boletto pounds the 39-year-old Freddy, Freddy Cruz, but he cannot stop him. He didn't mix the jab in nicely as Tenny alluded to earlier. Pito Cardona, Julian Wheeler in a very important fight for their careers, but first here's Brian and Max. Excuse me, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much. And time for the Classic KO right now. Again, we'll be talking to Fernando Vargas later on here live on the program. Classic KO, 66 years ago today, Marcel Thiel.